Don't wait for tomorrow Welcome to another JK Deal Reveal, and today is going to be a very exciting one, hopefully with some brand new value, things that you've never heard us say or expose on a deal reveal so far. And for this epic reveal, we have Janie with us. So that's a rare sight. Hi there, Janie. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for inviting me. After all this time. I <laughs> She would have came if I just invited her, right? So that's what we shall receive. <laughs> I'm excited for this one. I'm really excited. It's the ins, the outs, what we learned, the wins, the less wins, the, the obstacles. It's that's what that's what this is about. There's you know, there's good and bad, and we're gonna go to through that today. So I'm super excited about that. Exactly. So Janie kind of hinted towards it. We are going to be revealing one of our own deals today. And we're going to share with you the story, the before, the during, the after, how it was put together, why it was put together that way, run the numbers. We're going to take a look at the, you know, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because we're going to show you all the curveballs, all the curveballs we can remember that actually yeah. happened on this particular <laughs> project. So um, I do want to remind you that tomorrow we are starting another round of our three-day blueprint. So anybody who has not yet attended the blueprint, this is really that foundational training to get all of your, the foundation in place so you can go ahead investing in the US the right way. But enough about that. We're getting excited because we are gonna take a look at this particular property that was purchased for $203,000 in Cleveland. And you're like, my God, was it a mansion? $203,000 in Cleveland? Well, just about. This was an apartment building, a 10 unit apartment building that was purchased. And uh, basically, here goes. As usual, your job is to say, is this a deal or no deal? So at any point in the chat, you can raise your voice whether you're chiming in from Facebook or you're live with us on Zoom, feel free to chat it up as you think this is a deal or no deal. So how did this beautiful deal begin, right? This is it. Day one, these were the numbers that we were looking at, okay? So we had 10 units. All 10 were occupied, tenanted, cash flowing at the purchase of $203,000. Now. 
um, the asking price wasn't $203,000, but that's what after negotiations, after determining what the seller actually needed, we landed on this and it was a cash purchase for 203. That's what warranted such a discounted rate up front, right? No subject to financing, no, none of that. They wanted quick cash and that's what we brought to the table. And these were the rents. So we had a mix of one bedrooms, two bedrooms and three bedrooms, which is nice because when you're in the apartment space and you have all one bedrooms, you expect much higher transiency. And so that really plays into the numbers that we need to factor in. So here we have, you know, basically three one bedrooms and um, perfectly fine like that. So this is what the numbers basically look like. Let me get my, my clicker again out here. So when we purchased, there was $5,300 a month of rental income, about 64,000 a year. And as you know, deal reveal style, we can just go in there, slap on the 50% rule and say about half of that's gonna be expenses between taxes, insurance, management, maintenance, utilities, permits, and all the other shit. That's you know rough and tough. You know, slap it, slash it in two, and you're left with about thirty-two thousand a year net income NOI. And so we basically purchased this ten-unit apartment building at a fifteen point seven cap rate. Okay, so deal or no deal. <laughs> okay, so let's let's say that the numbers were very very strong uh, on the front end, but this deal had a lot more potential, and that's why we pounced on it. It's rare that we go in and actually pay cash, but when the deal is so strong, we uh, you know we make a few calls and we make it happen. But here is why we made those extra calls to make this deal happen. Because these rents, we identified them as below market for one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms in that area. Now, this was, and still is, in a D neighborhood, okay? This is inner city. This was in a rough area. So that's part of the compensation for such the high cap rate. But nonetheless, we identified this as an opportunity and um, and I don't have my VP on right, and right now, but I did look. The rents on one bedrooms are closer, market rents for one bedrooms in this area. Janie, you're the one who, uh, who ended up uh, having a, a good hand in here. How much are the one bedroom market rents in this area? Um, market rents about 650, but for what we- bedrooms. Right, for the one bedrooms. Um, about 700 for the two bedroom and about 750 for a three bedroom. But we went higher than that. We did 750 for one bedrooms, um, seven, uh, so 750 for one bedrooms furnished, 750 for a two bedroom and 850 for a three bedroom. And that day when I did an open house and we had seven units to fill, I could have filled 20 units with those numbers. Everybody wanted those units. They were beautiful inside. And the prices, like people were just no problem, no problem. And those were higher than market rent at that point. Beautiful. So even without going above and beyond and without furnishing, we identified using rental meter that these rents were well below almost two hundred dollars yeah. per unit below market rent. OK, so if we actually do put in uh, market rent numbers here, Right, we would be above or right around a 20 cap at purchase. All we needed to do was increase the rents. Okay, so this is the plan. This was the plan on this building. We would go in, we'd buy it, obviously. Okay, take it down cash. We would increase rents not by $200, although we could, right? We would increase it by $50 across the board, right? The plan here was to, yes, increase the revenue immediately. And we were hoping for about three tenants to just leave, to not want to pay that additional rent increase. And they would say, you know, I'm going to find something else elsewhere. Goodbye. And we were hoping for three of them to just leave. Those three units that would then have been vacated without eviction, without cash for keys, without you know, any additional funds, we would go in and we'd renovate those ones, bring it right back up to market, even slightly above market, like Janie was mentioning, and get higher rents on those ones. Ultimately, very small project that we wanted to go in. Under fifth, right around fifty thousand dollars of renovation was what we wanted to put into those three units and clean up the outside. 
and then just seize it, hold it, keep the cash flow, keep it for 12 months, and then shop at different banks to refinance out, cash everybody else, and uh, cash everybody out and keep the asset. That was the plan, okay? So below market rents, easy value add, cash flow day one, uh, everything's lined up. But we got an accepted offer on a cash deal here. So what did we do? We actually brought in a total of four partners to make this happen. And this is how it happened. We had one active partner in the deal, meaning this was another real estate investor who wanted a piece of the business, wanted a piece of this building. And their contribution to the deal was to go find the money. We, were, we found the deal, negotiated the deal, um, inspected it. We were going to manage it, manage the value add. We were going to do all that. All they had to do was bring the money for the deal. And they claimed that they can find as much money as we'd ever need. Fantastic. So that for that, we brought them in. And this was someone that we had um, thoroughly uh, explored a relationship with. They'd been part of our inner circle for almost two years. We, we basically had conversations and you know on a daily basis. And now there was an opportunity. Let's put the money where the mouth is and off we go. So they got 49.5% of this company that we created just for this deal. 49.5%, we kept 50.9% and full control of, of the deal, right? So that's what it was. And this particular partner also had a growth mindset because we, were, we weren't and we're not just interested in one deal. We want to keep on growing with our partners. Their responsibility was to find a capital. So off they go. They start making phone calls and they find a first private investor who's willing and excited to get 9% on their money to be in first position on this opportunity. They want their interest paid on a monthly basis. So every month we have an interest payment of 9% annualized to pay to this investor, uh, to this investor. So their capital is not growing. We're paying out the interest as we go. But that wasn't enough. That was a, a little over, that was almost half of the money required for the deal from that first investor. So he kept on calling, found a second investor. They're going to be in second position. And they were excited to have 10% on their money with no payments along the way. All of their interest would stockpile until the end of the project, which was either refinance or sale or the sale of the property. And they would get 10%, but they'd wait until the end to see their principal and interest returned. Okay? So that's our second. We put in a cash offer with a very narrow timeline for closing because that's what the seller was motivated by. And our active partner wasn't able, um, making calls and couldn't find the remaining of the money, which was about 75,000 US missing. And so we started, we actually, I think I made one call and found a private investor and this particular private investor was excited with 6% in third position, deferred until the end of the project, but at the end of the project would get 14.14% of the profits of the refinance or the sale. And that's how we structured this particular no money down deal, buying it at a 16 cap, with next day 20 cap opportunities. And eventually after the renovation, we'd be above the 20 and we can refinance and complete our project in what the timeline was about 18 months. That was the plan. So is this a deal or no deal? Does this look like a good plan and a good deal for you? Let's see what, we, what we've got so far. This is the first half of the story, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> deal sandra likes it laurie absolutely sterling likes that too beautiful excellent dwight deal brian deal capital bold letters i love it okay great so yes i agree and uh, we were excited too well we still are but this is what happened <laughs> all right janie and maybe this is where you can uh you can chime in because janie did have a a more active role to play in this project, although we all did. So the story started as planned. We increased rents across the board by $50. But then the manager drops the ball. 
And Janie, maybe do you want to explain a little bit, try to go as chronological as possible as to what happened. So we increase rents and then what? We increase rents and then shit hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> so um, most tenants did not accept the 50, which was one thing, but the manager was not very good at explaining what was going to be happening in the building. So again, we were going to come in, we were going to do some renovations, we were going to put these units nice, the outside, the roof, like we were going to make this nice. Um, in the process though, the manager dropped the ball so many times and Kylie, you know, like just jump in. Now we did discover that we had one tenant in particular that was a drug trafficker. So he was into heavy selling of drugs, um, heroin, cocaine, crack, so those heavy drugs. Um, him in unit five. Yeah, yeah, from, yeah unit five. <laughs> um, but we found that out, not through the manager, but through, you know, anyways, that did not come up in the due diligence. Do you have something in my archive that, that you wanted to talk about specifically? I've got, I've got a whole sheet. Of okay, well, go and then I'll, I'll fill in because you have something <laughs> in mind. So basically, we've had a property manager and we've been using that property manager in Cleveland for years and years and years. And so um, although it wasn't his specialty to do apartment buildings, he had he had a lot of business from us, a lot of referrals from us. You know, he went out, he, he overstretched what we learned after the fact into a, a realm that he was not comfortable with. He should have said no, but he had said yes because he wanted to please us. And um, because we had such a good relationship and rapport and long standing with him, um, and he was starting to project manage as well, we hired him both as property manager and project manager. So we paid him for property management and we paid him for project management. Mm -hmm. But he was not a project manager. <laughs> um, he was extremely um, absent. Uh, I think he was also going through like um, kind of like a divorce, midlife crisis going on vacation to different states randomly, sporadically. So he was but not- No, that. this is someone we've been with for now, like it was almost six years at that point. Yeah. And yeah. he had all our units. He had our some of our JK Partners units. He had you know some community members units. This is someone that we've been working at, you know, with for a while. Go ahead, Kyle. Absolutely. So- you know, he's the project manager and he's double invoicing us for some stuff. If More than one. It, More than one. If, if we hadn't catched it, we would have double paid certain invoices. Plus, he's getting a percentage of all these invoices as a project manager, would not do his follow ups with the contractors, would not give us reports as the clients. We were doing follow ups and, you know, just terrible across the board. So much so, and compounded by the fact that we increased rents. Like he was doing a poor job project managing for us, but he was also doing a poor job managing for the tenants. And, and it's so not, it's not by lack of follow up. I'll say that like we were on him wanting some videos, wanting some pictures, making sure that things were that our timeline was being followed. Um, we even went to Cleveland a couple of times, obviously. So it's not by lack of encadrement. I don't know what that's called in English, Kyla. Basically follow ups. But, yeah. but, but you're skipping ahead of the story here. I, oh, really, I really want to try to get as chronological okay. as possible ahead, so people ahead. see you know, yeah. how we pivoted along the way. So poor management, tenants basically wanted, some of the tenants wanted to pay rent, yeah. but like, oh, yeah. where's, where's the manager? Like, <laughs> like that's how bad it was. So ultimately, no tenants paid or we never received any rents because manager wasn't collecting. So basically zero income across the board and this went on for like two months right that he said he's going to do something but doesn't actually do it and people just started leaving mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah everybody in the templex left except for three <laughs> the <drug> dealer, <laughs> which we which we basically had started an eviction process for and then two others who just didn't want to leave because, hey, free rent, right? Yeah, there's no manager and there's no services, but hey, I got free rent. So fire the manager, right? Off you go. Now we need a new manager, right? So. And all we, this, now we're, we're 
out with that manager, but not with just this Tenflex, with everything else. So this is taking a long time because he has a lot of our units. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to restabilize the whole portfolio. We need a new manager, especially for this Tenflex, because you know we're supposed to be having five, six thousand dollars a month coming in and zero, but taxes, insurance, those still have to be paid. Utilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're just entering into the uh, into the fall and winter now, um, so off we go. Uh, and now, <laughs> you might not have caught this, but now everyone left, and the plan was everyone who leaves, we now have to put in the money because they weren't exactly, you know, pristine nice. units. <laughs> yes. If someone left, we had to do some more than cosmetic work to get them back up to market. So now we had to renovate the whole freaking thing. And we didn't budget for the whole thing. So we were undercapitalized basically overnight by about $150,000. So when I talk in the blueprint about putting your buffers in place, right, 50% more than the expected renovation you think and 10% of the assets value, right, this is pretty much worst case scenario. That's pretty much your $150,000 right there if you can't count your buffers in place. Now, thankfully, you know, we like to deal with other people's money, so we keep our money pretty pretty tight to our chest. So we have some capital to deploy, right? So we didn't mention to any of our partners at that point that we needed more money, that it was over budget, none of that, right? We got this, right? Curveballs happen. So we basically end up injecting a hundred thousand of our own capital into this deal, just shy of a hundred thousand. Because now it's not just the units that are not doing well. The plumbing, there was cement in our plumbing and in, in the main going to the main of the uh, you know the, the the city main just before so all that someone poured cement down a toilet so now we had cement so we had to dig the front yard now this is a big property uh we had to fish things out i mean the roof started leaking which was apparently fine before but now it started leaking like crazy there was um um, there was uh, people stealing stuff, leaving some cars in the back, like police cars. And now this drug dealer destroyed Unit 5, like completely destroyed. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Electricity, people pulled things out of the wall. Like, oh, there was so many things, so many things going on. And you're like, okay, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, like stir crazy. Yeah. So through all that, new manager comes in, gun ho well-connected with the city says wonderful this this is in a neighborhood that's going to qualify for these beautiful government grants we can finance you know these renovations like free like up to 50 percent like if you do 200 300 thousand dollars worth of work you know we'll get 50 percent subsidized and so forth it's like wow this is a godsend thank you so much so we start that process but these are long processes and <laughs> by the time everything is ready she basically says we missed the deadline by one week and so there's no more funds in this particular grant budget treasury. And so, sorry. Meanwhile, right, mice and rats start coming in. Foundation issues start happening. Contractors try to give crazy high bids, even with this new manager, because it's her preferred contractors. And although she didn't say that she was taking a cut on top of it, she was taking a nice cut on top of it. And, you know, just thing after thing. Contractors, now we started outsourcing outside. We started really getting involved ourselves and we started to find these contractors ourselves. I mean, we needed to, we wanted to clear the backyard of some trees. So we, we hired someone. Contractor falls out of the tree, breaks his leg, is out of commission for a month. Oh my goodness, it's just wonderful. Jamie mentioned the roof damage that um, the roof was older, we knew that. But now suddenly through all this mess, now it starts to leak. Off we go. It just goes on and on. Contractors starting the job and disappearing. You know, just contractors whatever. that apparently uh, were building new houses in Atlanta. And honestly, <laughs> they did not know how to use a saw, mm, a miter saw. So this guy comes in to renovate our unit. And he does not know how to use a miter saw. So we're like, okay, well, first of all, he said he didn't have one. So like, okay, let's use ours, lose mine, no problem. So he starts, but he doesn't hold down his, his piece of wood. So he starts going down. It flows out everywhere. He almost gets it in the face. So then he's like, I'm not going to use the miter saw. I'm like, okay, you're weird. You should know how to use this if you've been building some houses in Atlanta, right? So next day he comes in with the DeWalt 
what are those, what are those, those called? You know, like those hand saws with uh, the plastic, you know, where you can slice like on like half or in diagonal. And it, he comes in and he has like a thousand square foot of, of quarter rounds to do. That's the only thing that we wanted him to do at that point. And he's taking out his little hand saw. I'm like, oh no, oh no. Like, it's just sad, 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 sad. Contractor after contractor after contractor, people who are licensed and bonded, people that had, you know, relatively good reviews. Hey, we, br we brought our project manager from Canada to help us continue this project on. So all of these things are happening compounding and we're burning through that 100,000 rather quickly. And then we get other big tickets like the roof and all these things. So we're like, all right, we're going to go get another investor, right? And so this is a fourth private lender coming into the deal. Now we've dealt with these invest with this particular investor for many, many years, approaching 10 years now. They were our first investors and we've been building a relationship. We started with a $25,000 loan with them and that deal went and came, came and went. We went into another deal and that pot has grown and grown and grown. So throwing um, what ended up being about $60,000 um, unsecured is basically a business loan, not secured on title. This is a trust loan, almost love money, right? Um, at 12%, but at this point we were nearing the end of the project, 12% for short amounts of time with no lender fees and so forth, because these are private, these are not hard money institutions. It made sense, but enough was enough. At that point, once we started taking that additional money at 12%, then we basically had a personal presence, um, almost through to the end. We went there, Janie went there. I went there for a little bit. Janie went more than once, three or four times in total um, with additional backup help to bring this back on track. And since we were, we did have a bigger presence on site, we decided to try doing some short-term rentals in the one bedroom units of this apartment. You remember there are three one bedrooms? All right. We converted all three of those in, in a couple of weeks time into fully furnished, beautiful Airbnbs, okay? And that worked incredibly well for three months. <laughs> so for three months, those one bedrooms, which were currently right before making 400 and, how, how much were the numbers? Four, 475, I think they were bringing in. for one bedroom. Right? We're now bringing in almost 2,500 each per month, okay? Short term but the area was crap, right? So for three months, especially during the time we were there, everything was running fine. However, after we left, right? There's an expression in French. Uh, well, funny, did you talk funny, about the other manager, Kyle, before? What's that? Did you talk about the other manager that came in before the short-term rentals? Mm, no. So, so the manager, the first manager that we had hired and fired, okay, he's gone. Now, we bring on another manager who, who, so we had talked about, we, we talked to a couple of management companies and we finally hire this, this other management company. And she says, you know, that she can bring us good money with, with section eight and different programs. She's very confident. She's so confident that for months after some units were renovated, she got zero rented, zero. It was every week. We were on the phone with her every single week. It was just a nightmare. She kept promising things and just not delivering. It was uh, it was interesting. It was very interesting. And so then we decided to do the short term rentals because we're like, we need you know to start making things happen here. Yeah. yeah. And she she was supposedly overseeing those units. Now at that point we have some cameras, some security cameras in there, and she does not like. The short term rentals. So there's a little bit of a bias in this story where we don't exactly know if what she said was exactly true. She was the one basically who told us that those units were basically bringing in prostitution and drug abuse and drug trafficking again. And it's not, not on, it might have been, might have been. But uh, yeah, go on, Kyle. <laughs> 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 so after we left and with this new manager who wasn't very fond of short-term rentals, um, a couple months later, we had to shut everything down and I'm saving a little bit of heartache. Yeah, she wasn't that. making money on those short-term rentals. Maybe that's why she didn't like them. Yeah, maybe. maybe she wasn't managing those units. Though. On those ones. Yeah. But um, 
so there's that um me, it, it's something as silly as like the dumpster that even our dumpster was being used by like neighbors and was always full like it would get empty and the next day it was full again by not our people our place is empty and the trash is overflowing and guests are complaining because the trash is overflowing you know it's just silly stuff like that so uh we shut everything down and um and then we came back to personally oversee the renovation of the final units basically that were uh, that had not been completed through all of these trial and errors of different contractors along the way. So, so basically we, we got seven of the 10 completely redone and the last three basically had co just cosmetics that so they could have been rented as is, but they would they were far below the caliber of the other ones which were above market. Um, but at that point, we were at our 18 month mark with our private time flies when you're having fun, right? 18 months have gone by uh, through all this adventure and two of our private investors in first and second position started sending us messages like, hey, when's the money coming back? I'm, I'm going to need it for this or that. And they started putting the pressure on it like, holy crap, we didn't even finish renovating. So the seasoning period hasn't started. So it's going to take another, say, month, month or two to finish renovations, and then 12 months the season before we refinance and get everyone out. So we were above a year out, and, and they were already asking and starting to put some pressure to get their money back. And they had extensions on those loans. We, right, we had built-in extensions. So these people were yep. just asking for their money back prematurely, which sucks. So a note on that, when we do loans, we do them in the in the amount of the time we expect the project to take. And this one, it was 18 months. And then we always build an optional one-year extension. So in this case, we had two optional one-year extensions that if we need it, it's written in, people are aware, we don't hope to use it, but shit happens sometimes. So let's plan for it in advance. And we had exercised our first yearly option at that point. Um, so that's where we were at. Uh, so investors starting putting pressure on and we just saw it like over a year out and we didn't want to get these calls every month and so forth. That's a hard limit for us when we have investors. We want, if you're passive, you know, be passive. Let us do our thing. We've been doing it for years and, you know, we've never not paid an investor. And so, you know, just be cool. <laughs> Don't invest capital you need or you think you might need is the bottom line here. <laughs> Word to everyone. So we put it up for sale, simple as that. We had created seven units far above market averages. The numbers were back, back to where they were very, well, very, they're very decent. And not every buyer is like us that looks at the numbers today. Some do buy on Performa. So the Performa on this building was really, really nice. We bought it for 200,000, but the Performa was over 600,000 based on the income. So we had put it up for sale for just under 600,000. We agreed on 561 and two months later it was sold. Now that might sound like a lot of profit, right? We bought it for 200 and sold it for basically 550, right? But after you factor in all the investors who are paid well, over delivering, overpaying the, what we would call the good investors because we like to reward good behavior. And so the investors that are part of the deal that didn't give us a hard time and that we want to deal with again, we're going to give them more than we even said we were going to give to. And so after we paid for all that and we did sell, which is really not our first uh, goal ever in real estate, but we have to pay capital gains tax. So after factoring all that, there's very, very, very little left over at the end for us. And that's the risk of being an active real estate investor. When things go sideways, you take the take the win and you take the losses if there's any. So that's another reason why um, basically we'd never want to sell. Those capital gains taxes are almost irrelevant if you can just refinance and effectively sell to yourself tax free. And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the story of this beautiful tenplex, which is almost a two year story after everything is uh, said and done. And a ton, ton, ton of learnings in here, which include uh, be very cautious doing short-term rentals in an in inner city or in the hood. <laughs> we knew that was a risk. Um, 
we're not sad we, we wanted tried. to test that out that was on us that was on us yeah but it did create some beautiful cash flow that oh kept yeah the property going um, oh yeah and and, and it allowed right. us to rent those tenants th those units for far more than what they could have gotten on the market with much better tenants after all that is said and done those seven units that that i filled up the tenants were wonderful absolutely wonderful great communication you know beautiful project ma property management so things turned around nicely it's just a matter it was a matter now of of seasoning it for a little bit and putting in a little bit more money into those other units uh, that weren't done but um at some point you have to decide you know is this worth the headache is this in the vision for my life is this what i i want um, so at some point you, you do have to make a decision to either move forward or, or stay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we decided that it wasn't worth our time anymore. Oh, yeah, exactly. And the, you know, the importance of property management and all this, you know, and, and to always be on your toes, it's not because you've been with someone for, you know, for five, 10 years that it'll always be. So, you know, we just have to be responsive and, you know, this is investment, uh, it's never risk-free, but you know. <laughs> there's uh we had a lot of safeguards put in place here we we ex we overextended the manager should have said no <laughs> the, 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 we were all confident at first and this was supposed to be a fairly easy pro project it's because the ball was dropped so massively that everything else spiraled out of control because otherwise 90 percent of this story would not have happened if you know, the manager had done their job, unfortunately. Not the manager, the project manager, and then so on and so forth. There are, I mean, there's a lot of pivoting points in that story, and we skipped through a lot, but yeah, yeah. But but hopefully, um, hopefully you, you like this story uh, from a learning perspective. Um, and I want to thank everyone who was on last night's Mastery uh, Alliance call, actually, who I was sharing parts of this story, especially when it comes to the private lending side. And they said, hey, why don't you share this in more detail? And, you know, that's a great idea. You know, in our head, it's not a huge win. So, you know, we're not, um, you know, drawn to share it and scream it to the hilltops. But there's a ton of learning in here. And so it makes all kinds of sense that we share it uh, with everyone. And we're not perfect. And the life isn't perfect. And yet we have to roll with it. Better done than perfect. And through these type of experiences, we can make the next ones better for everyone involved. But what I'm extremely proud to say is that we're still standing. We have a smile. We did get a profit. And a big part of that was because we bought it so right. Okay. Imagine if we had paid 400,000 for this property, it would, we would be in a very different situation. All of our investors are getting paid as expected. And some are even being overpaid so that we're just priming the pump for our next deals because of the good karma and the good faith that, uh, that, came, that went into this deal across the board. And I would just like to add, and, and you said that very well, Kyle, but, you know, shit happens and, and there's ups and downs and, and that's, it's normal. It's who you are in the process. It's not, you know, like many times we could have cried and uh, I did a couple of times because, it, you know, we didn't, you know, it's a, it was a two, two and a half year project. So it was, you know, there's, there's been a lot of ups and downs, and, but it's, it's who you surround yourself with. And even if, you know, a lot of people stay silent. A lot of people stay silent because they're ashamed of what happened to them. They're ashamed of have been conned. They're ashamed that their contractor left with their money. They're ashamed. And so am I. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, it didn't work out as, as well as we wanted it to. And it sucks. It sucks. But with a lot of learning, and I think what's so important here is don't stay stuck. Don't stay ashamed. You can share, you, you know, like this community is a safe space and we've been in other communities where it's not, but this one is, and we're going to help each other out. And through all this, the community was, you know, was there, our partners were there. It was a huge learning curve. It always is. It's okay. It's okay. And I just want to tell you that you're not alone. You're not alone. So when you have a question and you, you feel silly of asking it, don't. The, go in the Facebook group, ask those questions. People are going to support you. I'm going to be the first one there to support you. Kyle as well. Share and don't be embarrassed. It happens. But if you don't try, you're not even, you're not doing anything. So if, so make sure to go and, and put one foot in front of the other. And that's how you learn. And that's how you'll get to where you want to go. It's by trying and surrounding yourselves with the right people.
Love it, love it, love it. And the chat is just blowing up. Thank you, everyone. You are all amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being part of this community. Yeah. And for those who are brand new to it, well, we've got we've got lots of more stories and adventures ahead. So stay tuned for sure. So on that, tomorrow it begins. 8.30 Eastern time tomorrow. Our blueprint is going to be happening. And we're very, very excited to have new and old join us. If you've already attended the blueprint and you missed Janie's uh, drop, um, you can have access to this full updated, upgraded three-day blueprint training for just $5, okay? If you've attended a previous blueprint for $5, you can join on to this one with all of our new content and resources that we've tacked on since we've converted it from two days to three days. So that is once in a lifetime. And so if you're interested, you can just go to n14.club slash blueprint. This is if you're there for the very first time. If you've already attended the blueprint, just reach out to uh, myself, Janie, info at nowfortomorrow.club, or if you've already connected with Mahela or Romel or Trina, all of the JK team is here to help you. Any, Any access point you have, problem. just make sure we hear you, we see you, and uh, we'll get you in. So that's our blueprint, n14.club slash blueprint for you. And um, I just got the little video. I'm going to wish you a wonderful evening. And we'll see you hopefully tomorrow morning. Yes. Yes, I'm excited. Thank you, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. And until next time, do now for tomorrow for the lifestyle you deserve. deserve. All right. Take care, everyone.